Hey, how's it going everyone? Chris here and today we're going to take a look at a cool force explosion effect from the Duel of the Force Star Wars Sword. Ready guys? Let's go! That was awesome. Okay guys, a quick note before we get started, make sure to check out the Creative Store, but specifically for the Star Wars inspired product packs. There are a couple, but they're essential if you want to bring that awesome idea that you have to life. My personal recommendation would be the Star Wars Complete Film Kit because you cannot beat the value of that pack and it has everything that you guys have seen across the channel, like the Star Wars VFX Academy Series Vol. 1, and two, and of course every asset that went into creating the Duel of the Force Star Wars short that was released this summer and even more. Um, if you guys cannot get that one, my second recommendation would be the Star Wars Essentials Kit and like the name suggests it has bits and pieces from every product and basically it comes all together so you guys can get started. Highly, highly suggest you guys to check them out, you do not want to miss on those things and I'll have the links in the description. With that said, fire up After Effects and let's get started. Okay guys, so here we are within After Effects and I have my composition ready to go. Now, a quick note guys, you are gonna need a couple of visual assets to pull this effect from and you can either use your own if you have um, the ones that uh, we need or you can get the ones that I told you guys from the packs because After Effects is a compositing software, not a simulations one. So After Effects cannot make dirt blast effects and distortion electric. Um, explosions. So with that said guys, let me take you step by step of how you can use visual assets and the tools within After Effects and bring all of those things together to have an awesome effect. So everything starts with your sequence edit guys. And as you can see guys here we have myself and my friend trying to react to the supposed explosion that's happening. And keep that in mind guys when you have a VFX scene and you're shooting it, if there needs to be a reaction um, do make sure that your actors are doing the best they can. It's not the best in this situation, but we did what we could under the circumstances of which we shot the thing. So, also, as you guys can see, if I scrub through, guys, we have a very slight camera movement, but because the plane of the camera does not change, we can actually use the simple a simple 2D track to have some tracking data so that our assets stick to the scene. So that's what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to you know, select my click, right click and hit track motion. Now I'm going to go to my tracker tab, tab and hit rotation as well as position. And the reason that I do that is because I want two points. One is going to calculate the position and the other one is going to calculate rotation data so that when I create my null, my null will stick to the scene and every asset will follow the exact exact camera movement. So I would analyze forward and then I would go to layer, new, null object and once I created my null object I would edit target and apply that data to that null. But I already did that so we don't have to do tedious things. So I'm gonna open up my null here and if I zoom in guys you can see the null sticks and if I scrub through the timeline it sits very well to the scene and if I hit P you can see all of our position data and if I hit R you can see all of our rotation data. So now I'm ready to bring in my visual assets and get started. So the first thing that you're gonna need guys is a dirt blast effect that starts from the air, lands to the ground and dissipates through time but it doesn't fill the whole frame. Then you're gonna need a dust effect that fills the whole frame and technically goes through the camera. Now I'm gonna open up my anamorphic title bar bars here because I knew when I was making the short film that I would use that aspect ratio. So because the VFX were implemented with that ratio in mind, I'm gonna let it fit on for the remaining of this tutorial. So what I did here guys is I brought in my assets and I positioned them to where I think everything fitted right and then I linked it to my null object so as I scrub through it fits the scene and the audience does not get off 
because it doesn't feel right. So the third thing that you, I need to bring in is my actual force sparky explosion thing. And this is this asset. And as you can see, I parent it to the null, but selecting this tool, drag it into the null, and now my asset will stick to the scene because of that track data. Now, the cool thing about the pack, guys, is that it has everything that you need to pull of this effect. The dirt generates from the explosion, the explosion happens, and the dirt falls down. And so you have everything you need to do this. Now, from this point on, we're actually going to start using After Effects and quite a few tools within After Effects that is going to help us blend all of this together. Now, this looks quite okay, but we can do so much more. So, the first thing that I did, guys, is to implement two quick flash effects. So, I have my Flash 1 and Flash 2. And what those are is they're two solids, and you can do that by going to Layer, New, Solid, and I made it white because we're dealing with light effects and these are the two things. So I'm going to open them up and if I hit T, I bring up the opacity of that layer. And as you can see, guys, all I did is implement that white solid as a flash by making sure to input keyframes and take the opacity from high to low as you guys can see here guys and it's only three frames so it happens really fast and the second one starts from zero up to 75 percent and then down to zero again so with those two quick flashes we're telling the audience that something very snappy is happening right so the next thing that i did is to implement a lens flare because we have a light effect, lens flares are usually an easy tool to incorporate in your VFX to make something look nice and have a good impact. Now, I know that not everyone has lens flares from Video Copilot as a plugin, that's why I pre-rendered a lens flare, if we check it right here, to go through the frame very quickly and very nicely and have that effect. So that is in the pack as well. And as you can see, guys, if you do have um, the lens flares plugin i just put the flare in the center where the explosion happens and i ha and then i have it having a very quick zoom through the camera and have that lens flare and despite the fact that all of the these things by themselves don't have a big impact when you bring all of those things together they do have a big impact and that's where the cool things happen like when you have little things here and there and they all come together so let's see what else we can do because we're dealing with the light effect let me close everything else we need to make sure that the environment is affected by the light so let's say i had a light effect happening here wouldn't the ground and our clothes be affected now of course we don't have the budget to simulate that whole thing and have 50 people working on it so we're gonna trick after Effects. So what we did um, is I went and created a new adjustment layer by going to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm naming everything so that I have an easier time. And then I went to, oh, I'm missing my my tools. Let's fix, let's fix that. There we go. So I went to my ellipse tool. And if you don't see it, if you click and hold, it's gonna bring all the tools. So I selected my ellipse tool and then I made two masks one for us and one for the ground as you guys can see and then i applied some effects to make the thing look like it's affecting the ground because of that light explosion so if i scroll back guys here you can see what i'm talking about so because the explosion was blue i implemented a curves adjustment and i pushed the blues up and the reds down I also incorporated a hue and saturation effect just to play with those blues because they were too bright. So once I did that, I feathered, I played with the feathering and you can do this by selecting a layer once you have your masks and hit F. Now this is will bring up the feather value and when you play with this you can see that it really helps um, smooth the transition of that effect. So this is with zero and this was before. So play around and see what fits and what doesn't. And then the last thing was to turn the layer and the blending mode to add. Because it's a light layer, I want it to affect the luminance as much as possible. Because if I turn it back to normal, 
you see that it's very weird and doesn't really look right. So change your blending mode to add and if you don't see this tab, simple toggle your switches. Now with that done, if I fire up all the other effects, um, we got, you guys can see what we're going with. Now this is all good and right, but the real thing that sells an explosion like this, a sci-fi explosion, is distortion and distortion waves. And since we're so close to the action, we as the audience that's been seeing, watching movies for so long, we expect some form of distortion um, to happen. So the way that I did this, guys, is I created new adjustment layers, I renamed them, and then I used the video copilot plugin, hit distortion, which is not essential, you can also use the turbulent displacement and it goes, um, if I remember, it goes to effect, distort, and then you have the turbulent displace effect. But I really like using heat distortion and if you are serious about the effects, I will highly suggest you guys you take a look at. Video Copilot is awesome and their stuff is really, really good. So, by implementing the heat distortion effect, if I open it up, and zoom in here, you can see that we have a slight distortion, but it really helps blend everything together. So I have two of them, as you guys can see here, but the second one only affects the center. And again, playing with the feather value and with the settings, I'm really forcing those effects to look the way that I want. Now, a cool thing to keep in mind when it comes to effects, guys, is how you implement them in the scene and then how you take them away from that scene. So I cannot have the distortion happening all the time, right? So if I click the arrow here on my layer and go to effects and then hit distortion, you guys can see that I have my two points and basically by implementing keyframes, I can control how that effect is taking place and how well it gets dialed down basically so it starts high as you guys can see distortion amount 10 but then gradually as our, our scene plays out it will drop down to zero and playing around with your keyframes and how fast or how slow an effect takes place really can make or break your composition so keep that in mind guys it's a good tip and yeah now after my distortion effects I want to implement a blur effect, but not just a random blur effect. I'm actually did not name my layer, so I'm gonna name it right now. So click, right click, rename, let's call this one blur. So what does this layer do basically? So I'm gonna go right here and open it up, even though ah, it still looks place, cool. So if I zoom in here, guys, you can see that I have a cool blur effect that starts from the center and as it goes out there to the outer edges of the frame, it maximizes. But it has that cool radial effect and it's really cool to use when it comes to explosion or something very dramatic and violent happens. So the way that I did this is I created a new adjustment layer, as always, and then I went to effects, blur and sharpen and selected radial blur. Now, the first time that you open this effect, it kind of looks weird because you have that kind of spin effect. But if you go here to the type tab, you can select the zoom effect. And this is the one that we want. Now, I would change the anti-aliasing to high for the best quality. And let's say that our action was happening on the side. You can select the center tool and bring it that point of or origin right there. So, since our explosion happens in the center, I'm gonna leave it in the center. And now what you need to do, guys, as I explained you before with the distortion effect, is how to basically bring it in and then dial down. So as you can see, guys can see, if I click my arrow again and go to effects, I have my blur effect and I have it, I have my keyframes and I tell it, um, hey, start and when the explosion really happens in its at its peak i would put it to a very high amount but then gradually i would remove it and again playing around with the keyframes and the timing really uh, makes a difference 
Now I have an extra distortion because the blur effect kind of merged everything into lines. So I just introduced another small distortion just to take that clinical cleanest lines of that because if you go before you can see it's very straight and with just an extra little distortion effect it helps out the last thing that i do and i do this always all the time is create a new adjustment layer and implement a grain effect um, some people are very picky when it comes to grain but when you're doing visual effects it gets to the danger zone that everything looks way too clean like almost to like an artificial way because obviously vfx is not real and it's a computer generated image so by implementing a grain effect you really merge everything together and you kind of make it look less perfect let's say so if i zoom in here guys and remove the grain effect you can see before and you can see after this really helps and i highly suggest you guys use grain i mean of course do not go overboard as you guys can see here guys i have the intensity to 0.25 and the size to 2.25 so very small but it really makes a difference into merging everything into one image and as you guys can see we're pretty much done okay guys so that's a wrap i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and you learned something Make sure to check the rest of the videos on the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, don't forget to visit the Creatrix store for awesome assets and that elusive black box and unleash that creativity.